Hello, everyone, and welcome to the final round, the final nine of the 2023 season. We are here at the Disc Golf Pro Tour Championships presented by Barbasol, and it's Big Barry Commentary bringing you the finality and the crown of the whole season, the biggest payout in disc golf history, in a battle for the ages. Ricky Wysocki maintaining a one-shot advantage over Kyle Klein, who made up five strokes in a four-hole stretch in the front nine, right when you thought, okay, Ricky Wysocki's going to run away with this. All of a sudden, it becomes a close battle. Don't look now, Calvin Heinberg out there charging, even though he is still five back. Yeah, I mean, we have Ricky Wysocki, who's been in this position a billion times, and then Kyle Klein, who is new to this position, position but very comfortable over the last couple tournaments who has looked more cool calm and collected than kyle klein lately i can't think of anyone he's just got a very calm confidence yeah he does uh after that three hole birdie streak as we fly over 10 after ricky started off with two big putts in the first three holes kyle turned to brian Earhart and said i guess i'm taking second and now he's one back on hole 10 but what a funny line to say, I guess I'm taking second, because it wasn't rock solid that he was still going to take second. So it's kind of a weird confidence thing to say that you're still going to take second. Yeah, that's true. But he believes in himself, and he knows that he's got himself a chance. And now going into final nine holes, he could take this thing down. On a hole that seems like a must-get for these guys, Ricky's off a little early left, but still putting for birdie. Adam, much closer. Tell you what, I'm proud of, proud of Adam's fight so far. That's going to be for f- four out of the last five. Correct. After being two over. Oh, Kyle pushes this one wide and hits an early tree, and that is not good. Door opened up for Ricky to extend the lead, perhaps. Oh, too much turn, maybe? You know, what I've noticed oh. about <clears throat> Isaac is... He's getting a little too much turn. I remember hole one, a few others, where the the angle is a little too steep. Oh, Kyle Klein! Off the cage! Oh, great effort from the fairway. And look how close he was. We'll finish that that thought in a second here, Paul. But look at this. Nose up. That looks so good. Just perfect touch. I mean, that is how you run after a basket from the fairway. Beautiful that run. That would have been for his second of the tournament. Yeah, his second hole of the tournament was a throw in on hole two. Ricky doesn't and, care. Yeah. Well, that, that putter is just. Fuego. He needs an oven mitt to pick that thing out of the basket. See how he went in and grabbed it with his left hand? Smart thinking, Ricky. Do not burn that right hand right now. Yeah. I mean, Adam's going to have to be careful picking this one out. Left hand, smart. Yep, smart. Yeah, you're saying that, uh, continue your, your, your statement about Isaac pulling things off to the right side of it. Yeah, it just looks like he's heavy on the Anheuser. Um, and, and you see that a lot with his shots that he puts it on the angle mm. and then it flies to wherever it's going to go, but it doesn't flip to the angle. And so he's got to be precise with whatever angle he's putting it on it. It looks like it's a little bit heavy. It just minimizes the gap size so much when you're that style, which yeah. really just goes to say, how accurate he really is because we talk about how he's the best gap hitter and he's not even hitting it with the best angles he's he's hitting it with the best accuracy yeah it's incredible stuff hole 11 can be a tough one par 3 375 downhill have to be firm with a putter or kind of touchy with a mid-range for these guys This can easily go too long down the hill if you hit the gap like Ricky has done here this looks so good this does look beautiful get to the ground quick it's the ground no and tree. all the way down. Not too bad, though. Not too bad. Just outside the circle playing 85 feet, though. The basket gets so small when you're when you're that far down. It looks like a rebound for rollers from down the bottom of the hill is what it looks like. Does this get down? You know, the left side hyzer like, oh, no, no, don't. no, 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 no. I was just about to compliment Adam for hyzering to fading off to that left side because that's where the, the flattest closest to the pin ground is and just hitting the wrong part of a root unfortunate roll there for adam and if kyle can get through here 
it's actually a good spot to be. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. It's much harder to roll down the hill on that left side, but it's just hard to get there. Very lucky. well thrown. Yeah, a little lucky, I think, to get through on that side. Isaac trying to see if this can keep turning off to the right, and it's going to be a frightening putt from there if he does indeed elect to go for it. You know, with his putting struggles over the last few holes, Ooh. does he? Well, it's framed up for him. Uh, oof. That's still outside the circle, or circle's edge. Can Adam keep with the hot putter? No. And just off left. Good air ball, though. You don't want to catch metal. Unbelievable. Oh. Left hand or right hand? Right hand. Uh, it looked like he, I think he was re leaning right hand. That's not good for him. That's going to singe. Unbelievable, man. This guy. Statement putt. He is like putting on autopilot right now. Isaac, a good save. And that distance has been giving him fits this round. You know what? <clears throat> I just had a thought as we watch. Kyle for birdie needs it. Yeah. Gets it. But Isaac's uh, backhand, the way he hits lines, it reminds me of when you throw a sidearm, like a chop sidearm to hit the angle. Uh, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, Like yeah. a stable sidearm where mm -hmm. you're like, if I hit it on this angle, it's going left. That's how he throws his backhands. Yeah. He just chops things through gaps. Yep. Interesting. Imagine having to be in a position where you have to make a putt on 11 to not lose an extra stroke. I mean, this is, it feels like such a bonus birdie in so many ways, but that's the position Kyle found himself in and he is still trailing Ricky by two. That being said, he's actually cut into the lead since yeah. the beginning of the round. Started off as a three stroke deficit. We have eight holes to play, or excuse me, seven holes to play. Well, 12 par four, 622 feet. It feels so much longer. The tee shot, you don't really get a lot of distance. It's really just a setup for a 360 foot approach down this tight tunnel. You're gonna see four hands and maybe a backhand turnover off the tee. But again, you're only getting about 280 off the tee, maybe 300. This looks perfect. He's been liking that ditch. And it's... That's not a great roll. Gosh, there. that is a really bad roll. Didn't have that much speed, but with the left to right slope that you have here on this fairway, very common for it to get a big skip and just keep moving down to the right. Kyle puts the brakes on a little bit sooner. He'll have a better access down the next corridor. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure the Ricky went fast. Mm. I, I like maybe a play like that where, where Adam's going over stable fairway. Maybe. Isaac going to try to break this through the center? No, he's pushing that out the wide side, trying to get some late turn. Got a little bit, but that's going to be tight. Very tight angle, yeah. Adam just not going to have to try to play for position, try to get as far down the fairway without going right as possible, and that helpful. is a very helpful, helpful kick. You do not want to fade hard off to that right side. And so tight indeed that Isaac has to go forehand turnover instead of his preferred backhand. And that got a decent way up the fairway. He's got a putt. Kyle going stand still, forehand flip up, get clean. Oh, wow. He didn't hit a thing. That is so good from there. Not until the very end. Kyle will have a birdie putt from 45. When Ricky's going over stable fairway driver. Not, well, Kyle's got a shot. Well, can't get, uh, count Ricky out even from 100. No, right I mean, this is when he goes on these crazy birdie streaks. Right now, he's sitting on four in a row. Well, that's not an easy shot there from Adam. That is well thrown. Mm -hmm. With that zone that he's been throwing since day one that he's been with Discraft, he loves that disc. Okay, Ricky is way farther than I thought. I thought maybe he was about 80, 90, but he was about 150. Little counter skip movement back towards the pin a bit. Should be a short putt for the par. And Isaac, how nice would it be to make one of these from range? 
Well, he was farther than I thought, too. This camera angle from this side it's really, tricky. really doesn't give you the full story. Kyle to get within one. Oh, that, that could have through. That could have gone in. Did that go through? I think it was just a little heavy on the right side, but you do see that putt get gobbled up. Ricky had one on the previous hole last round that caught. Yes, high, high right. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like if Ricky's is going to stay in there, then Kyle's could have too. But it certainly wasn't close enough to the center that we can call to spit out. Couple little tap ins. I missed opportunity though for Kyle right there. 40, 45, they're not guaranteed but at this level this moment in the tournament you gotta make those you really do I've purchased 60 acres of land in Tuscaloosa Alabama I am designing a disc golf course for the one and only Dylan Seas If for whatever reason you didn't watch the front nine, uh, shared a statistic that I think is pretty interesting about Ricky being a front runner, and that he is in situations with a three stroke lead going into the final round, he is perfect. 13 for 13 in winning those events, uh, which just means don't be trailing Ricky by three going into the final round. No. Um, but Kyle, if he is gonna track him down, if he's gonna set history, uh, make history, He's got to make sure he's knocking down all those putts inside 50 feet. Anytime Ricky gives you an opportunity, you've got to take it. Oh, that was so close. Now he's going to be in a really tough spot. Maybe even just only play his sidearm roller down. Maybe like a sidearm to the next gap. See how aggressive he gets. This is, this is heavy too. Wow. Heavy on the Anheuser. Was it 13 for 13 or 17 for 17? I couldn't I remember. I think it was 17 for 17. 17 for yeah. Se yeah, 17 for 17. I didn't know which one was right because I'm not yeah. a statistic guy. No, I'm pretty sure it's 17 for 17. It's even more than I'd said. Look at those kicks. That might actually give him a shot. Really tough angle, but something. Here's that little hyzer flip on that one, and this is just gold. So good. Yeah, and you, and you really actually want to be more left like he is for the backhand so you can push it through that right side. Yep. There are some places up there at the top of the hill that are kind of in that no man's zone where you don't know, do I, no man's land, where you, do you go forehand turnover? Do you go backhand hyzer? Do you go backhand turnover? Kyle in a tough spot to yeah. get par. Adam short of the corner just trying to pitch hyzer. And it's good. Yeah, that's good. It's about as good as you really, as, as good as he was hoping for. Good enough, yeah. Yeah, sidearm roller. Been in this spot. Seen some incredible sidearm rollers. That one takes a bad kick. A good kick. Yeah, it looks like it's going to stop kind of at that 90 to 100 foot area. Short good. of the pin. Better than going sideways. This is a play for about, I don't know, 50 feet. Yeah. Yeah, about right. Or about left. How bad was this for Kyle? Oh, not bad at all. But he does have to get up and down. Or up and in. Oh. Uh, maybe a decent kick. You think? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I think that was, yeah, I that think was so. cruising. Not a hurtful one. We'll put it that no, way. Not a cruising for a bruising. Oh, slide it up. Ah, gonna have to earn it. In that yeah, I mean, it's possible that Ricky misses his first putt under the sun this week, but he's got to miss eventually. Here's the thing. You'd think. Hopefully, it's not that one though. Very good. Adam tied for fourth. 
Isaac in seventh. Oh, oh there it is. Beautiful. The play for 50 works. You got a stroke like that. You should be comfortable playing it anywhere in circle two. <laughs> anywhere in the world. Yep. That just... Tough putt to make it from Madagascar. Yeah. <laughs> I think pretty tough. It's pretty wooded over there. All the way back to here through, through the jungle. Kyle Klein. Awkward putt. You add up all the putts that Ricky's made over the last 13 years. How many times do you think he's stretched around the world? Lots. I I think I heard this statistic yesterday. Or not statistic, but, but What maybe. are you about to share with me? <laughs> well, Just making things up here. And you no. actually have something that relates to this? Well, no. I, I think that I heard, I think Nate talking about this on the live yesterday, that he thinks that when Ricky's done, he will oh, have, have the, the most circle two putts. Oh, yeah. You go it. Is that right? Yep. That's the one? Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I most, hijacked you. I'm sorry. Yeah, the most circle two putts of all time, which is for sure. I mean, at this point, he's there. He's already there. Yeah. He's, he's like Steph Curry. Like, he's already broken the three-point record, and now he's just breaking his own record every time he makes a C2 putt. Yeah, but you think about, like, Climb will probably made a bunch over a long, long career, you know? And Ricky's got years left. Do you think he's already caught him? Yeah, I do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah see, I think but, so. but, but, you know, it's it's fun thought. So that's Look. just recency bias, I think. But mm -hmm. I only got to play with Climo a few years, but I've played with Ricky my whole career. I bet you when you played with Climo, he made a few circle two putts, though. Not many of them hit the ground. <laughs> Isaac, clean off the tee. It's going to come up short. Ricky, this is a big tee shot right now, coming down the stretch. And that, once again, opens the door to Kyle, who has been just lacing this tee shot. He and once again, again I j he has the right disc. Oh my god! He has the right so shot shape. He In has, that moment, this is a the, one of the toughest holes ever to get a birdie on. <laughs> yes, it is. Four oh six, dead straight. You see what you got to do, but do you have the ability to do it, Adam? For most people, that answer is an emphatic no. Adam. Sidearm is so hard on this hole. It's mostly a play to hit most of the fairway, I think, and he's done that. Go in. Oh, Ricky, great approach. But two shots becomes one as long as Kyle's able to take care of business from short range. I mean, I think he's in bullseye. I think he's got yeah, to tap in. Yeah, I don't think it's a thing. Adam, can he make another 80, 90 footer? No. Not this time, unless it banks. Off oh, that route. Oh, oh. <laughs> Landmine. It reminds me of the Michael Sullivan putt at USCGC. Yeah. Did you actually get to witness that? I didn't witness it, but okay. uh, Michael Sullivan on hole 18 at USCGC laid a putt up, guys. He hit a route that was in the ground. The route slingshotted it into the basket. A layup. I thought I heard it was a stick. A stick. Maybe it was a stick. Yeah, it was, it was a stick, like a fork stick that like just, just, just caught something on yeah. the back end and it just lifted it up like a crane <laughs> right into the basket. I can't even imagine seeing something like that. Kyle is able to knock down the birdie and he does make it a one shot uh, deficit. And man, that lead is gone in a heartbeat on any of these final four holes. Yep. $40,000. Who wants it? 22000 for second, but I guarantee you, Ricky and Kyle don't give a hoot about second place right now. I don't think they, honestly, I don't think in this moment they care about 40000 I think they care about winning oh, the sure. Pro Tour Championship. You have to. There's no, there's no thought of money. You can't put it in this situation. Those nerves are usually settled in the first couple of holes. Once you get into the third or fourth hole, it's all about the sport. Yeah. It's all about that mindset and getting in the zone, which they have clearly established themselves into that place right now. Kyle can put the pressure on with a good tee shot here. Yeah, I, think, I like this. I think it's a little oh, oh, a little early. It's good though. It's a putt. Yeah, I think we could even put that into better perspective because there's a lot of people out there who say, could you imagine having a putt for 40000 And that's not what these guys... Yes, there's 40000 on the line, but that 40000 
isn't nothing compared. Mm. Oh, this is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Wow. How do you shape a shot like that? Anyways, but that 40,000 is nothing compared to the years. I mean, actually a lifetime. Yeah. This is a lifetime of work for these guys. I mean, you put in all this time, it's all about the payoff and the titles and you don't worry about the money as Ricky is just throwing a gem and an opportunity to put a lot of pressure on Kyle for his upcoming putt. Yeah, what is Kyle about? 50 feet down the hill? Yeah, but looks like it. Good opportunity for Kyle as well. If he can make that putt, put a little pressure, he's got at this point. Oh, look at that for Adam. You're running out of holes. You got to start mm -hmm. applying a little pressure. Apply a little pressure. Huge putt right here for Kyle. 55 feet. It looks good. Love it. Oh, and once again, he's just barely off, and not even Isaac can believe it. Such a good run. Huge putt for Rick now. I think we know where that's yeah, going. Yeah, you definitely know where that's going. That guy doesn't miss a lot of putts under pressure, does he? Oh, no, he's basically built his entire career to be the monster that he is in these moments. And you got to love Isaac still being able to sit there and, and react as a fan. Yeah. Because you got to love seeing a battle like this take place. What a battle it's become. But with three holes to go, Ricky has two shots now on one of the toughest stretches on the course. Yeah, nice birdie from Adam as well, who's really cleaned up his act from the first few holes. He certainly has. He's been playing the back nine in that middle stretch so well. Ooh, looks a little high. Psych. Nose up. Well, we're about to get into the final three of the season. Ricky with a two-shot lead. Nice Valley, Montana, with my family. When we were bored, my parents would just be like, go outside. That's where memories are made. It's such a part of childhood that I feel like is being lost today, and I have desperately tried to instill that into my kids. Well, here it is, 16, uphill, par three, 410. Uh, takes every bit of what you've got with the straightest disc that you have in your bag to an elevated basket. This hole has been giving the field fits. That being said, I don't think Isaac's missed it one time. And he's got the box. Let's see if he can do it again. He's been heavy on the Anheuser today. I'm, I'm afraid of that. And yeah, a little heavy. Yeah, sure. I mean, but that's great. I'll take that result 11 times out of 10. Yeah. For the rest of your life, you'd take that drive here. Ricky, though, has to hit the gap. All costs. Oh, it's turned over. And that's, that's okay. okay. He's had the initial gap. He's not put himself in a position where he's got to scramble, but he is deep. I think he might be outside of C2. Do you think Kyle can hit another? Do I Bonus, think he can? Birdie? Well, I yeah, definitely think moment, he can. In this moment, gonna... I think he can. He's he's a cool cat. Cool. He's a cool cat. I've seen so many cool cats. <laughs> Not all of them can throw straight <laughs> like this. <laughs> How cool is that, dude? That's the coolest cat. How cool is that? Kyle yeah. Klein does not care what oh Ricky my, does, man. Is he is playing his amazing. own game. Think about those two holes, the straightest holes you could ever, like, career birdies. Like, you just, he I, does, don't, he, I don't understand. Kyle does not care, dude. I'm trying to tell you. Such a good tee shot. Could you imagine if this just finds the bottom? No way. No way, dude. That is so Can sick. Can you catch this man? You can't. If he does that, unbelievable. Watch this. Okay. This. I hope this isn't hyperbole. This might be the best I've ever seen Rick putt. Oh, my gosh. I've Look at this. Yes. Oh, I love that so much. There's the rapper legs a little bit. <laughs> I there love it is. I love how he feeds off the energy of the crowd. Oh, if you, it, it's like watching the yeah. coolest sports in the world. It's like Mike Bre Breen saying, bang. Yeah, that was so amazing. If you uh, go back and, and watch that again, though, you can see Ricky watch the putter, not looking at the basket, watching the flight. That's how far away it was. Isaac, I wasn't sure if that was a, ha ha, I made it again, pick up the mini quick, or if he knew it right out of his hands. But This has to go. Oh, 
Kyle does not care. He's a cool cat, man. Dude, he's so poised. He's so composed lately. Look at that guy's face right now. Do you think that that guy's got a lot going on in his head? He's like, I just got to get another birdie, man. I don't have to tell you. Oh, get in there. A That's bogey for Adam. Currently sitting in fourth place. A lot of money. Ten grand for fourth place. A lot to fight for here. And it looks like we've got a tie now for Isaac and Adam. Look at how far they've kind of pushed themselves away. Them and then, of course, who else? <laughs> Kalenheimer. Yeah. Eight under in this round. He is out there just shredding every line and kind of doing it in a very Kyle Klein type way where he's just like, eh. Yep. Soul 17, par four, 850 feet. Big tee shot through a tight gap, setting yourself up for, and if you get a really good tee shot, you'll leave yourself 375 to this pin that's tight around the corner. Risk reward going for the second shot. Ricky two shot buffer going into the final two holes of the season. Gap hit. Most important tee shot on the course, and he has gotten through it perfectly. I think he changed this too. I think he I think he changed this so he didn't go deep there. That's crazy to think. It's so far to go deep. But yeah, you're right. That's one thing I don't think people get as well as these guys last few holes. They do get that extra power, that extra fifty feet. You gotta be careful when you're going full force. Adrenaline adds a good get, amount of distance. We got to get some Kyle Klein doesn't care t-shirts out there. Cool cats. Cool cat Kyle, Kyle Klein doesn't care. Isaac Robinson doesn't care either. Beautiful tee shot. Big battle right now going on for that fourth place finish. And if Calvin slips up on 17 and 18, they could even jump back into podium position. Beauty. Just how many people did we see miss a gap? Two? I think two. Yeah, through the course of the weekend, not many. And it's impressive because that is a very. It, these guys aren't throwing like soft shots of the gap. They're trying to get 500 feet yep. through a gap that's about one umbrella and a quarter width. All right. Very important tee shot. Get it high, get it tight. This is wide. But I think it's, oh, it's okay. safe. I think it's okay. Yeah, it's high enough that it's going to just. That's great. And. and, and all, for all intents and purposes, that's a perfect shot. Was never in danger of going to be left. Puts himself in position. He knows if Kyle puts it close, he has to run his putt. If not, nah, he's still going to make he's his putt. Been, yeah, what am I talking yeah, about? He's, no. he's, he, it was a perfect approach. Look at this sidearm. Perfect. <laughs> One of the best sidearms in the game is Isaac Robinson's backhand. Yep. He's going to have to earn that one, though. He's got about 35 feet. Adam Hammes. Messed this one up yesterday. Pulled it to the left. Let's see if he can make the correction. That's better height. That looks great. That's going to be right on it. Dime. So good. Great correction from yesterday. Well, they're going to mess around and make this hole even harder next year, aren't they? All right. Most important shot of his week. Yeah, I could throw it in. It's not going to go in, but it's going to be in bounds. And that's really all Kyle needs to do right now. 18's tough. Birdie will go a oh, long way. Absolutely. Kyle. There is no safe way to play for par in 18. Being within two is a good spot for Kyle to be, I would say. Cash. Beautiful. It. It's, it's almost better in a way. And I, obviously, you'd rather be leading by two, but being back two, you have to play it for Birdie. All the pressure is on Ricky to find a, a way to somehow scrap up the par. First things first, though. This has to go. Goes I, we, that's a foregone conclusion. That is not, man. That is, For a human being, yeah. That is a robot just, we're looking at, dude. We've seen him miss putts down the stretch. That's not something that he just has never done. The birdies. The May, maybe they're not the rope. Maybe I'm the one that's programmed to think that every single thing that comes out of their hand is going exactly where they intended it to well, go. Well, it does until it doesn't. That's the thing. Star frame for the group on hole 17. Yep. 
go ahead and make this island smaller next year. There it is. Good moment there, Cynthia, helping Kyle make sense of it all, knowing that there's no way that Calvin can track him down from Chase Card. He is now finished with his round. It's just two players that can take down this title. Can Ricky Wysocki become the back-to-back -back and three-time Disc Golf Pro Tour champion? Or can Kyle Klein have the greatest two-week stretch in disc golf history? It all comes down to hole 18. Par four, 830 feet, left to right turning drive that lands kind of by the wood line, but doesn't go too far. Out of bounds right, the whole entire way. Out of bounds, it goes all the way around the green. There's a mando that makes it really tight. You have to get distance off the tee, inbounds. We saw Ricky just absolutely put this in the perfect spot. He needs a similar drive as that, but he's actually going mid-range. So he's playing for par. And this is a good start Again, for par. It's so hard to play it for par because this next shot, he's got to go into a very narrow landing zone. A lot of people are doing that, but it's not guaranteed. Kyle knows what he's got to do, though. The gauntlet is laid down. You must birdie. Is this too heavy? This is so good, Germ. That is good. It's going to be a tight around that yeah. hand, though, but he knows what he has to do. He has to go around there. Best case scenario, that gets another 30 to 50 feet but it's still very attackable from there. Isaac, turnover, this is a par play. I think him and Adam are gonna be doing the same thing. Hit the gap. Wow. And this can skip right now, ends up just fine around the corner. So Ricky up first. Go in sidearm. That way he can carry a little inbounds no matter what. I yes. like this play a lot. Yes. Even the mistake is carrying inbounds. He's going to be... Oh, this is straight. Okay. Oh, seeing the disc land there instead of continuing into the woods is a good sign for Ricky. He might have some kind of reached out, stretched out play. But that if Kyle puts it close, he's going to have to get up and down to win. I don't think he, there's a play from in there, though. I don't think that's something that you do. I know. And then if you do end up making a play, you bring out of bounds into play, and then you could lose the whole thing. But it all rests on this next shot from Kyle Klein. Can he apply the pressure? Isaac also having the pressure applied with Adam being safe. And those are matched shot for shot. Here it is. The season comes down to this for Kyle Klein. Has to go for the pin. Has to put the pressure on Ricky. This needs a flex. Oh, no. <sighs> and... Ricky wants to know if that crossed in bounds. Guarantee it. So technically, there is still hope in a way for, for Kyle. You know, Ricky obviously just pitching up, knowing that he doesn't have to get anything close to the pin. Put this one in bounds. Put it close would be great, but just put it in bounds. And he has done so. Now, the situation is they're not quite sure where Kyle crossed. And so they're going to move up the fairway. We're going to see Adam and Isaac both throw their approaches. And as we get closer, I think these guys are going to realize that Kyle didn't actually cross up there at all. Quick little inside of, of these two right here. They looked at scores, too. I got the story that they looked at each other, and Isaac asked Adam, what are you doing on this hole? <laughs> got, and then Isaac said, I'm playing for par. And Adam said, I'm playing for par. Nice. So it was a match to see who could get the par. Who could do it the best. Because they knew if, yeah. they, if they got bogey, that would drop them down. And, and it's a big drop. Yeah, it's, it's a big financial $2, setback, yeah. $2,000 difference. All right, so... I saw it cross the old beat pole. I didn't see it come in. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Okay. Then 
All right, so now that I think, I think you gotta go back. Yeah. the confirmation from so Disc Golf Pro Tour you know, director Jeff Spring. I mean, and at this I moment, this Ricky knows. No, I mean, yes, it's hard to tell from back there because the OB line is so far off the wall that you really don't know where the OB line is from the fairway side. I don't think they crossed. Well, I said the only way it's crossed him is up there. They crossed him up there. They definitely didn't cross him up there. I have to agree with Ricky on this one. And they're going to send Kyle back. Well, I mean, the board's still out of bounds. Just doing their due diligence to talk about, make sure everyone agrees. So now the situation is Kyle from 410 feet has to make it. can make it. He can have the holiest shot of all time, which would force Ricky to have to make his putt from the edge of the circle. This is a bomb. Dude. And Paul it looks pretty good. Wow. <laughs> it looks pretty incredible. And you know he was trying to make it. Mm. Absolutely nothing to hang your head about here, Kyle. An incredible run to put pressure on Ricky in a moment well, where it looked like he was just off to the races. Ricky making sure that he can lay this up, I'm sure. Yeah. And that will be his only missed putt inside the circle all week. There will be no playoff. It will not come down to anything more than Ricky tapping in for $40,000, but nothing was set in stone until the final hole was played. And hats off to Kyle Klein. Oh. What a battle. How, how, do you, how do you take the greatest front runner of all time to the very last hole? Put him on the ropes. They That's were right. tied. That's right. You put pressure. Yeah. You just keep birdieing. You play your own game. That's exactly what happened. But in the end... It's Ricky Wysocki, and let's make that 18 for 18. <laughs> There's his father to greet him. Better at uh, being a father of champions than <laughs> bursting open champagne bottles, but a beautiful moment to, uh, to see that right there in the embrace of the family. His little brother, Zach, is no longer little. Goodness gracious, he's nearly Ricky's height. Very and a good moment with season-long caddy Fern and girlfriend all there to embrace him. Ricky will be taking home a huge trophy made by Charlotte local Brad Tucker and a even bigger check than he cashed last year. Three-time Pro Tour champion Ricky Wysocki. Ricky, how does it feel to close out the season on such a triumphant note? That was no better way to, to put on a show for everybody. That was an intense battle with Kyle. He played great all day, and I had to make some great shots under some high-pressure situations, and it was a pleasure battling with him. He's been playing really well lately, and he's a tough person to beat right now. When you're playing Nevin, of course, that's probably more wooded than anything we've seen on the Disc Golf Pro Tour. How does it feel playing a course like that when the pressure is so high? As everyone watching saw, the gaps seem to shrivel up <laughs> under pressure. You're really having to execute shots, and if you're not, you're, you're just scrambling for pars and bogeys. And yeah, I, luckily I got bit by the par five, and uh, I was able to bounce back. So I'm very, very proud of myself for doing that. Well, the season's over. You're going to get to go back home to Arizona. Let's reflect on the entire 2023 season for you. What are you most proud of? I think just the beginning of the season, obviously with the health troubles, I didn't know where I was going to be come mid-season, late season, like right now. And I know I told myself, you know, I really want to be primed and ready for USDGC and the Pro Tour Finals. And obviously it didn't go my way at USDGC and I just wanted to get myself in contention. And as you guys saw, I play really well. When I'm on lead cards and I have a chance to win, I, I, I feel like I pride myself in, in really putting myself in those situations and, and succeeding. And so I knew that was going to be my memo and had a great support from, from my caddy and had my parents and brother here. And, so it's been, a, it's been a great moment. <laughs> With that, the season is a wrap. We're gonna send it back to you guys in the booth. Ricky, congratulations. Thank you for that, Brian. Appreciate that. But 
uh, Paul. I, I always get emotional this time of year. Uh, it's sad. It's about to be a very quiet, the fastest, and somehow the shortest four months of the year are the off-season months. It's been another pleasure to bring you a season here on Joma's Pro. My seventh season on... The... <laughs> Paul, it's been great having you in the booth yeah. again, man. Another great season with you. But wow, what a season. Way to, way to wrap it all up. Absolutely. I mean, going from... We had so many different winners this year. Yeah. Throughout the whole entire season. We got to see new faces. We got to see superstars born... And then in the end, we get to see Ricky Wysocki, one of the greatest closers of all time, do exactly what he does best. You know, one of the things I love about Ricky is, is his self-talk is so good. He says, I'm a winner. This is what I do. This is what I like about myself. I mean, those are things that you can, um, if you're a striving disc golfer, talk to yourself the way he talks about himself. Well... We hope you guys enjoy everything that you've seen this year on Jomez. We will continue to bring you the best disc golf content we possibly can. We appreciate you guys for watching. We love you, and we'll see you next season.